Hey there, everybody. This is Glenn checking in with you, and today we have an action-packed agenda for you. We're going to be taking a look at some of the wall details that Schindler typically used in some of his houses and really look at some specific examples of how they're applied. He had sort of a very standard wall framing system that he was advocating, and there's some really particularly interesting things about it that we'll go ahead and teach you how to model accurately within Revit, and then hopefully we can go ahead and extend this to some of the other different types of walls that you're using for the other houses. To get started, let's go ahead and just take a look at the basic wall system that Schindler proposed. Let me go ahead and bring up an example. This is what he called the Schindler frame. Let me pull it out a little bit. This is actually something that's on the Dropbox folder, and it's an incredibly densely packed drawing. There's a lot of information in here. But if you scroll on in, zoom on in, and kind of start taking a look at it, you'll see really an indication of a standard wall system. He's specking out a lot of information in here for a lot of different cases. That's what sort of makes the drawing uh, kind of challenging to take a look at. Because we're looking at sort of an exterior wall case and the foundation treatment over like treated wood. We're looking at it in terms of just a framed floor over like uh, just the concrete and the precast concrete beams that we looked at in some of uh, the last sessions. And we're looking at just different conditions, kind of a straight up condition where we have like a wood wall over a plaster wall. We're looking at some clear story conditions, but there's a lot of stuff in here indicating, oh, just the section conditions and the elevation conditions for the, the windows, the door frames, just an awful lot of information in here. But we'll kind of unpack that a little bit at a time. Down at the bottom of this drawing, there are actually a lot of details kind of showing all the specifics of the door framing, both in kind of section view and plan view, the window framing, you know, a lot of detail all about how those window and wall connections are going to work because uh, that's actually where a lot of the detail is. Once you get the basic wall system down, a lot of it just comes down to the connections between the openings and the wall system framing. Okay, another example you can go ahead and take a look at is... Let's pop this up. It's the Jansen house. Okay, and this is just a, uh, an example of actually that Schindler system being used in place. So you see in this drawing a lot of the same sort of details just kind of called out specifically for how it was going to be implemented here. Oh, where there's things like we have the basic wall system. There's that little funny detail in the corner where we're going through and uh, putting a little kind of triangular base in there. Um, this is kind of a clear story condition with a wooden wall, the transom window, a little bit of beam underneath it, and some planking over here forming a little bit of a ceiling. Kind of, uh, just kind of have the clear storing area. Yeah, same sort of basic foundation condition. So this is an example of it actually carried out. And this is kind of a typical way he worked, sort of dictating the overall system and then specking out the specific differences on the individual houses. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one first. Um, we're later going to go ahead and take a look at the issue of the King's Road House, which actually has a very different sort of wall system, a lot of precast kind of concrete elements. But we'll save that one for a little bit later in the session. So let's get started on this one. So switching back to Revit, let's go ahead and get started by modeling just some of those foundation elements, and then we'll start building the walls on top of them. Now for what we're going to do, I'll just go ahead and build kind of a standard little foundation, uh, kind of a prototype. It won't really be specific to any of the houses, and that's going to be okay for what we're doing getting started. Oh, let's start by just putting uh, just a little bit of sight down for ourselves. Let me go ahead and close that up and actually switch to the site plan view. That would be a better thing to do because the site will be visible there. And in terms of putting this down, if we go back and look at the detail, you'll actually see, I'm going to go switching back over there to the standard one, that typically when he went through and did these, we would always have the site or the subfloor, you know, which is going to be level one within our building. We'll go ahead and have the subfloor oh, at least six inches above the grade. Um, that's typically just to allow for uh, kind of a water kind of detail so we don't get water into the building. We like to basically allow that the you know, finished floor is up above where the grade finishes off. So let's go through and like start with that. If we go through and put the topology at about minus six inches, we'll just do that as a starting point as opposed to a detailed topology. I'll just put minus six inches in here. And I'm just going to sort of put a big old site down and not really worry about it too much because we're just really using it as a base. Okay. Oh, let's go ahead and straighten that out. Okay, and we'll finish that up. 
Okay. We have our basic site down now. Now we can go through and actually start thinking about putting in some uh, foundation walls and then on top of those or underneath those foundation walls, we'll, we'll go ahead and cut out a building pad. So let's get going with that. That's sort of something we looked at last time where we'll go over to the home tab and we'll switch to the walls. And we'll say, let's go ahead and get some sort of foundation wall type. And we can go ahead and create like any type we want. Oh, I'm trying to remember what we did last time. It was about six inches or eight inches. Let me make a six inch foundation wall. We'll edit this type and I'll duplicate this. Saying we'll just do a six inch wall. We'll edit the structure so that it's the six inches of cast in place concrete. Then we'll go through and once the type is created, start thinking about the properties that we're going to be putting in here. And what we want to think about is the top and bottom of that wall here okay, relative to the level one. And let's think about that. If we go back over to the detail, we'll see that that foundation wall, if we count the planking, which is going to be the subfloor, and that's what we're going to use at the top of level one, which is minus a half, one and a half inches, uh, inch and a half for the uh, base plate there, it's going to be about three inches down. So the top of our foundation wall is going to be about three inches below level one. Below that is really just however deep we're going to go, maybe two feet deep, something like that. So if I switch back over to Revit, what that'll look like is for the top constraint, Let's go ahead and bring that to top is level one minus, and I'll put an offset in here. That's kind of the easiest way to do it, minus three inches. Okay, down here at the bottom, we'll go through and say, oh, that's level one minus like two feet, just whatever it's going to be for our specific soil conditions. We can apply all that. That's just going to sort of be the standard for right now. And we can then just put in some sort of a Foundation. Again, I'm not going to worry about this too much because this is going to be a little bit of a prototype for doing the different wall systems. Okay, we got that in place. Let's go ahead and take a look at that in 3D just to make sure it's looking good. Oh, what can I do? Let me put it in wireframe so we can sort of see. That's not too bad. I will shade it again. Okay, what's happening here right now is you see it's poking up a little bit outside the dirt. We still have to kind of put a building pad in here. So let's go ahead and do that and actually put the uh, strip footing underneath it too. For the, uh, well, go back to the wireframe so I can sort of see the little strip footing going in there. For the strip footing, let's go through and do that just using the uh, foundation elements that we talked about last time. We'll say, let's go through and put a wall foundation in there. And then for that, oh, what was his detail again? It was something like, oh, it's six inches. I think it's about 12 inches wide by about six inches deep. He used a relatively small foundation. So what we can do is duplicate this type. And I'll say that I'm going to make something that's 12 inches wide by about six inches deep. And again, we can change that later as needed just to uh, sort of fit the specific conditions. So about zero foot six on the foundation thickness. Say OK to that. And now we can just go ahead and start choosing these walls. So we can choose all four of those walls. Shade that if we want to. The eccentricity is something interesting. That would be if it's not centered on the wall. If we wanted to have it kind of kicked out to the outside or kicked to the inside, we could sort of enter a little bit of offset in there. But we'll go ahead and leave it like this. And the final thing we're going to do just to kind of get ready for this is actually just put in the building pad itself. So let's talk about that. For the building pad, let's go ahead and put something that's, oh, if we look at his detail, okay, what is it going to be? We have basically, oh, the floor level here. That's going to be level one. We want the six inches. We want to go down even further still. And I don't think he calls out something specific. Typically, well, looks like he's showing about a foot over there. So maybe about 18 inches, something like that. So let's go ahead and put it either 18 inches or two feet below the floor level, something like that. Let's go back over to Revit and do that. So what I'll do is go back to the first floor floor plan. It's just interesting. Why can I? Oh, I cannot see those things right now just because the foundation is below that first floor level. Let me go ahead and change that so we can see that first floor foundation. In fact, I think you know, Mary Lou mentioned that someone had this problem in, as they were working. The problem is, is the foundation is below the floor level and the view range is set to cut off at level one. What we need to do is just sort of extend it so we can see a little bit further. So let me say either level below or unlimited, or I can even just sort of put an offset in here, maybe two feet down. 
And what that'll do is just make it visible so we can actually see it. Okay, and that's kind of a, a classic problem as you're working with foundations is that they're often below your floor level. So you have to kind of worry about like uh, just changing your view range so you can actually see them within the level or see them underlaid under the level. Okay, so to put the building pad in, again, we'll go back to the site tab. We'll choose the building pad. We can sort of choose a specific type if we want to. Let's kind of edit the type in here. For this, we have something that's like one inch thick. Let me go ahead and just put like a little earth layer or something like that, because I don't really want to have much in there besides suppressing the earth. I'll make it about, oh, one inch thick or something like that. I can even choose a property for it. Maybe I'll just call it earth. And again, all I'm really doing is suppressing. I have to give it something. I could even make it like a sixteenth of an inch thick or something like that. Just have to have a little bit of thickness to it. And we'll say OK to that. And then in terms of where to place it, relative to level one, let me go ahead and place it at, say, minus 18 inches. Then to draw it, I'll pick the walls. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can actually pick the outside surface of the walls. That way it'll cut away well, the area that includes the concrete wall. We'll finish that up. And hopefully now, if we go ahead and take a look at this all in 3D, let me shade it again. Yeah, we'll have something that actually looks like a little bit of a suppressed earth. Beautiful. Okay, well, let's pause there for just a second. Okay, let's go ahead and also consider that other case, not just the exterior foundation, because uh, Schindler had a detail for that too. It's that case where we have that precast concrete beam, something about oh, six inches by eight inches, something like that. So let's go ahead and kind of put one of those in there too, just so we can illustrate that case. If I switch myself back over to Revit, let's go back to structure and I will put in a beam. You know, for that beam, this is the standard like a wide flange steel beam. What I want to do is load in a concrete one instead. So I can go down to the structure. Uh, look inside framing, and find concrete, and find a rectangular beam type. It won't be the right size, but I'll at least get us started. And then what we do is edit that type and duplicate it. We want to create something relatively small, oh, like eight inches tall by six inches wide or something like that. So maybe six inches by eight inches. We'll say OK to that. And then we'll change the actual dimensions here, zero foot six by zero foot eight. Put that in. And then in terms of where we're going to go through and put that, we can go ahead and put it at level one. Okay, but what I want to do is actually offset it down a little bit. And what I want to do is actually offset it down to be, you know, not only the thickness of the planking, okay, but also the thickness of the little uh, base plate here. So it's about minus three inches. So what I'll do is in that same sense, I'm just going to lower this by saying that the top of it should be minus three inches. That'll hopefully put it up right about the same height as the top of the concrete. Okay, so I can now go through and put in one of these beams. Maybe I'll put it across this way. Now, it wouldn't actually span the entire distance here. We'd have to have some intermediate girders, but, but I'll at least put one in there. Okay, maybe we can put some other ones in there, just as many as we need. So put another one in here, somewhere over here. Again, I'm not being at all precise about the location of these things because I'm just using them as illustrations. Put that one in there. And okay, we have some nice concrete beams. Super. So we're actually looking pretty good right now. Let's go ahead and just cut a section just to sort of see how we're doing from that perspective. What I'll do is create, go switch to the view tab and I'll use the section tool. Let's cut one in this direction. Okay, and let's take a look at what that looks like. So you can sort of see we're not looking all that dissimilar right now from the detail. You can turn that up a little bit if we want to, to see uh, a little more detail. Didn't really change much, did it? Okay, but we have the uh, beam in here, we have the footing, we have all those sorts of things. We can join some of the things together. For example, if we want to sort of see that footing detail closer to this, what we can do is come over and, oh, I think I have to choose one first. And I can say join. Let me join this piece to that piece. Okay, that'll clean that up a little bit. But we'll do some more things to kind of clean up the details a little bit. The important thing to note here is just that relative, let me go ahead and join this one too, since we're going to be looking at that. 
choose that, modify, join this one to that one. Okay, we're going to be adding a little bit more to this because the top of our floor is actually going to be up at this level. And even to sort of clarify this a little bit, what may be helpful is to actually switch to a thin line mode. Thin line mode, again, is all about this notion that in the standard mode, which is showing the default line widths, it sometimes it's a little bit hard to kind of see what's going on because the line width just obscures the dimensions of the geometry. At eighth inch scale, that'd be especially true. Let me pop this up to quarter inch scale. Or I could even go ahead and pop that up to a higher scale, like half inch scale or something like that, where the uh, line widths wouldn't be so dominant in the view. Okay, maybe that's not too bad looking, but we can make that thin widths or like fat lines, depending on what you want. Okay, let's go ahead and the next step we're going to do is actually start modeling in the whole notion of the base plates. So let's talk about that. Okay, now the base plate is actually something, if I'm being perfectly honest, a lot of folks probably wouldn't even bother modeling at this point in the process. I'll go ahead and show you how to do it, but a lot of people would skip this and just going to do it as part of a detail later. Because we're going to get to this whole issue of really, as we're modeling things, do you model every last stick of wood, or do you only model kind of those as detail items uh, and kind of proto or in typical details, do you actually have to model every stick? And you really don't want to model every stick, but for the sake of being polite here, I'll go ahead and show you how we would model that base plate, but this might be a step that you can skip and just add in as a detail. I could go either way on that one, but if I was going to go ahead and model that, here's what I'd want to do. I basically want to think about that base plate, and if I go back over to the detail and we take a look at it, it's pretty much a two by four laid flat is what we call it. So three and a half wide by about an inch and a half tall by today's standards, a little bit bigger when the house was actually built. But if we were going ahead and model that, I'd probably take a profile and sweep it around. That'd be the easiest way. I could model as a bunch of individual sticks, like individual beams and put them on top there, but that might be even a little bit more work. So I'm going to just do it as a, a profile because I think a swept profile, I think that might be the easiest way to kind of get a quick approximation. So if I pop back over to Revit again, here's what we might do. Okay, and we're going to basically do a sweep. It's called an in-place sweep because we're going to follow some existing geometry. Okay, and what we're going to do is actually just develop a profile. And in terms of that profile, I can sort of be sneaky about this. I just need a rectangular box that's like three and a half wide by one and a half tall. And I could create one that's specifically for that. I don't think there is one. Let me kind of just take a look and see if there is. I don't think there is. Let me insert load family. I can go down to profiles and see if one exists. What do I have in here? Maybe I have one structural, slab edge, wide flange. No, I don't actually have kind of one that's just a rectangular piece. Let's see if I have anything in here. Not seeing one right offhand, so we're going to go ahead and create one. And we'll do it just kind of in a tricky way because there's actually one that we can use that's pretty close to what we need. If you go into the existing families and you just go down into profiles, you'll actually find that there is something nice and rectangular. It's just a handrail piece. Okay, and if we grab that thing, let me go ahead and just edit its family. What I'm going to do is actually choose the family, not the instant or the type, but the family, and I'll edit it. You'll see it's just a big old rectangular piece, and we can change the size of it. Let me do a save as, is what I'm going to go ahead and just call this as opposed to being the uh, rectangular piece or the rectangular handrail. I'm just going to go through and call this, and I'll put it in my documents right now, but we can put it anywhere in your library. Let's go ahead and call this, oh, this will be like a just dimensional lumber. Okay. And that's really just more for our convenience to sort of think about it so it shows up looking right. I'm going to load it with that name back into our project. And here's what we're going to do. In those profiles, I'm going to find dimensional lumber right now. Let me just open one of the existing types, and I'll duplicate it. Because what I want to do is just create something that's basically, oh, three and a half inches by one and a half inches. Again, that's just a name. So I can say it's going to be three and a half by one and a half, oops, great, and now we have one to work with and we can start sweeping it. Okay, so how do we sweep it? Let's go back out to maybe the 3D view, that might be a little bit easier. 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through and create something called an in-place component. We're going to do a lot of different types of components. We've probably already put some indoors and windows components. This is an example of something where we're creating something custom to our geometry, where I'll say place or model in place. You have to always sort of choose what type of thing you're creating. And I call it structural framing because that's actually what it is. It needs to be kind of classified in the right kind of order of things so that it'll appear or disappear and be handled properly in terms of all the viewing. I'm going to call this just my base plates. And then what is it? It's a sweep. There's extrusions, blends, revolves, and sweeps. We'll talk more about this in a lot more detail in a couple of weeks. But let's just do the sweep. I think if you're familiar with a lot of... Uh, what is it? Uh, you know, geometric and form modeling. You've probably seen these before. I can first choose the path. I'll pick a path. And what I can do is actually, let me see, pick 3D edges. Let's see if I can get that. I want that edge on the outside there, that edge over there. So I'm picking the outside edges. Let's see if I can get that edge over on this side too. So if that is my path, let me go ahead and close that. Oh, it says that it oh, doesn't want me to go ahead and do that because it only allows sort of a single loop. What I have to do is a little bit of a, what would I call it, uh, just extending or trimming to make this work. Let me see if I can make that happen. What I want to do is just trim this one to that one. I have my pink line rules, so I need to go through and just get those things closed up so that it's considered a single path. So I'm trimming to bring those things together. Okay, now I can close it up. Beautiful. Next thing we're going to do is actually just edit the profile or load the profile. I could draw a profile. In fact, I could have just drawn something inch and a half by three and a half. Since I created one, let me go ahead and load it already. Though. I'll load a profile. Oh, hang on. I think I might be able to even do it here. There it is. Dimensional lumber. Since it's already loaded in, we loaded it into the project. All I have to do is choose it. Let me choose the three and a half by one and a half. Okay. Zoom on in there, you can sort of see, oh, there's a little bit of a notion of how it's placed relative to that line. Okay, what I'm going to do is just do a little shifting over. In the X direction, I'm going to shift it over, oh, let me try one and three quarters. That's half of three and a half, that's how I'm getting that number. Because it looks like it's centered on it right now. Now it looks like it pulled it completely to the outside. Let me shift it the other way, minus inch and three quarters. Okay, now it's on the inside. And now we'll try bringing it up, oh, zero, one and a half. Okay, and that's actually looking pretty good now. So what'll happen now is if I go through and choose this and I say finish it, okay, it's actually sort of created a 3D element going all the way around there that hopefully is in the right place. We can take a look at it in the section view just to confirm that it is. There it is. Okay, and again, this is sort of an example of something that I probably wouldn't necessarily model. I know, sorry if that looked like a lot of work, but I just wanted to show you what the technique was uh, for how you can go ahead and create that. But that's how you can go ahead and create this base plate if you want to actually model it in 3D. Okay, one final step I neglected to do. Let me go ahead and click Finish Model. That'll actually finish creating the object. The idea is for those in-place objects, we can go through and uh, just kind of keep on adding pieces, make objects that are actually made up out of more than a single form. So that's what that would be all about. Now, I told you that we don't typically model them that way. Let's talk about what we typically do do in terms of like uh, doing something like that. And that is when you're, it's time to go ahead and create a section like this or create a detail like this, what we often do is if you don't want to model every last piece of it, is you go through and just add detail items, which are really just line work on top of something like this. So for example, if I go over here to the detail, you'll see there's an anchor bolt, there's this little cross symbol, which indicates that it's actually the uh, base plate. It's, it's a, that's just how we look at a dimensional lumber when it's kind of cut in section. And if you want to go through and illustrate something like that, it looks like this. What you do is you go to the annotate tab. Okay, and we can add line work. I could actually draw line work and sort of put in detail lines to sort of just, you know, draft that very much like we do in AutoCAD or any other system. But there's also components which are drafting components, and we can put in some of those. Let me show you what that would look like. So we'll go back to annotate, and we can choose component, and let's see what we have available. 
almost like a big old beam component. That's actually not a true beam. That's just a piece of line work that looks like that. There's some brick. Let me load in an anchor bolt and load in some uh, dimensional lumber just so you can see what that would look like. So what will happen in, in the library under detail components, you'll find, oh, let me find uh, wood and plastic, wood framing, nominal cut lumber in section, which looks like this. Let me, I could bring in a lot of different sizes and stuff like that, but let me go ahead and just bring in two by four, two by six, eight, 10, maybe even 12. I'm control clicking to get a bunch of them. That's just getting a bunch of different sizes that'll be available to us. So here we have the two by four. This is just a piece of line work, but I can tab to rotate it over and then go dropping it on. And that'll just make our section, our details in our sections look a little bit better. Again, has no effect on the 3D model, but in this 2D view, it'll look a little better. Same sort of thing. Let me go ahead and put in a detail component for that anchor bolt. I'll load the family. I've got to find it all the time. It's detail components. I think it's under, oh, like metals. And there's some sort of common connectors. Let's see if it's in there. The bolts are in there. There's anchor bolts. Looking at it from the top or looking at it from the side. And just a piece of 2D line work, but it's better than having to draw it out manually. Now, this looks a little bit strange. Inch and a half anchor bolt. Let's see if we have a different type available. That looks a little bit big. Oh, maybe like a half inch or a five inch inch, probably what he used. That's a little nicer looking. And now I can go through and put it in there. Okay. Again, since it's a component, you can do groovy things like, oh, just change the length. If it turns out it's a foot long, didn't stretch very nicely. Okay, but create a nice looking detail like that. And again, looks good in 2D, good for creating the construction documents out of your BIM model. Okay, but that's just kind of a nice thing to do to kind of get yourself going. Okay, next thing we want to do is actually create the floor systems themselves. So let's move on to that one. Okay, now creating the floor systems themselves is actually pretty easy to do because we're going to create a standard floor. We're going to pay a little attention to the layering in the floors and how we place it, but floors again go pretty easily. Let's take a look at that. I'll go to the Home tab and I'll choose the Floor tool. And here's the deal. We'll choose just a regular old floor as a starting point. Oh, we're going to have to say where we're going to put it. I'm going to put it on floor plan level one. It doesn't like to draw floors in the section view. That's what it's complaining about right now. So let me switch on over. Okay, what we'll do is we have the generic 12 inch floor and if we were kind of at a very coarse level of modeling and not caring about the construction, we can use that one. Or we can go ahead and create our own floor type um, that actually sort of models things accurately. If we look at actually his floors, let's go back to Schindler's details. There's a couple of floors we'll look at. One is this issue where there's like a one and a half inch plank over some treated wood. Okay, that's one of his standard conditions. The other one's just sort of an inch and a half inch plank. We're going to ignore that finished floor for now. We're going to add that a little bit later. Typically when we do this, we sort of work to the top of the subfloor, which is that plank floor. So let me switch back over. And what we will do is create something like that. And let's take a look and see if we have something that's similar. Uh, we have some multi-layer floors here. Maybe I'll use one of those as a starting point because it's, you know, we're just going to be doing a little bit of adjusting. Let me choose that one as a starting point and we will duplicate it, edit it, and duplicate it. And what I want to basically say is that I have, oh, a one and a half inch plank. Let's say over uh, two by six framing. Okay, and it can be different. We're gonna create as many different types as we need to. To actually show that structure, what I would say is I'll edit it, and what do I want to have? I'm gonna leave out the finished floor for right now. We'll put that in a little bit later. For the actual structure of the floor, it's going to be, let's call it, I could call it wood sheathing. We'll give it a different layer in a second here. Let's call it one and a half inches in there. Okay. And then for the structural wood layer, let's call that, that's for two by sixes, it'd be five and a half inches. So zero, 5.5. .5. Now, if we would like that wood layer, that wood planking to look a little bit better, let's go ahead and take a look at how we could do that. Because if we wanted to have sort of an appearance, like if you look at Schindler's appearance, he has this kind of wavy finished line or finished lumber sort of look. We can go to the materials and create something. Because wood sheathing, okay, currently doesn't have some sort of surface pattern to it. We can create a different material for our finished lumber. In fact, I think he even has one in here. 
That's his flooring. We'll use that for the finished flooring in a little bit. Let me dupe this and I'll create one. Call this wood uh, floor planking. Okay, and I'm just creating a new material to work with. And the reason I'm doing this is I really just want to have sort of a different surface pattern. So when it's cut, or when it's cut or it's kind of looking on the surface either way we can go ahead and have an appearance like the surface pattern three inches parallel that may be about right it's kind of the thickness of the boards if we were looking at it like in a plan view something like that for the cut pattern oh it's currently showing this diagonal down let's see if i can find something that looks a little bit better like we could go for like oh this wavy wood pattern that might be nice in black We'll put that in there, and now what I need to do is just shift this over so this is pointing to. It looks like I did. Wood planking. We'll okay, say okay to all that. And I think this is going to look pretty good. Dimensional, about five and a half inches. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and draw some and see how it actually looks when we put it together. So what I am going to do is I'll put it over part of the building. I will say that we're going to choose some uh, walls pick those. Let me go through and, oh, what do I want? Because I'm going to use the foundation walls as the boundary. For the level, this is where we get to think about what the top of the subfloor, where it'll be, and it will be right at level one, so that height is actually looking good. Let me pick this wall. I'll pick this wall, this wall, and on the back side, just so I can go ahead and put two different systems in here, I'm just going to close it off with more of a line back there, and we'll join it from the other side. Let me trim this floor. So I just have it over half the building. I'll close that up. Let's talk about that. This is sort of an interesting question. This is this whole issue of should the walls attach to the bottom. Typically, that's often a good choice. I'm going to say no to this right now because actually I don't want the foundation wall to kind of jump up and kind of get cut off by the bottom of the floor. They actually sort of overlap in an interesting way. So I'm going to say no. You know, often that answer would be yes. Like when we're doing uh, like, oh, frame walls, we want them to come up to a roof or come up to a floor, like a second floor level. But I um, don't want it to happen here, so I'm going to say no. Then there's this whole issue of this overlapping volume. And that I'm going to say yes to, and I'll show you what the effect is in just a second here. Say yes. And let's take a look at it in section and see what that actually did. Actually, it's interesting. That was sort of a bad choice because it did what I didn't want it to do. I'm going to go back and undo that. And like, uh, I guess what it's doing is it's basically trying to say these two walls are intersecting each other. The framing is coming over and intersecting with the concrete and it's taking away some of that volume. And that's actually not what I wanted to do. Often that is what you wanted to do when you're doing a second floor framing into like a first floor walls. But that wasn't what I wanted here. So let me just do an undo. Okay. And there we have it back to here. We can go ahead and clean this up. We'll talk about detailing and how we can kind of clean this up a little bit later okay, in terms of uh, removing that line and like uh, making this detail look a little bit better. But for right now, let's just leave it at that out of the interest of time. Okay, looking pretty good in terms of this side. Let's go through and create something uh, for the other half of the foundation where I just have that uh, planking and I want it to go over these beams and stuff like that. So what would that would be is, let's go back to the floor again. Oh, let me go ahead and save the project. I'll actually do, let's say Schindler wall type examples. I'm going to switch back over to level one for drawing this. Okay, for the other floor, let me finish this. Sketch is empty. Oh, looks like I'm halfway through doing something. Well, let's quit sketching. Okay, let's go back. Oh, now I'd already started the floor. Oh, pardon me, I'm confused. We'll say floor. We're going to edit this type because the other type is very similar. It's just going to be the planking, though. It's not going to have the wood framing underneath it. So I'm just going to duplicate this, and I'll say just a one and a half inch plank. Then for the structure, we'll just take out that. Take out the structural framing underneath it. Okay, and now it'll just be an inch and a half thick. Say OK to that. For this one, again, we'll go through and pick some walls, maybe on the outside, on the outside here, 
on the outside here. On this inside, let me just pick the edge of that. That's actually kind of a nice thing to do. If um, I'm going to trim this up, the reason it's nice to pick the edges is if that boundary other moves, the uh, new floor boundary will follow the edge of the other floor, if that makes sense. Let me say uh, finish this up. Okay, and let's take a look at that in section. I think we should be in pretty good shape. Yep. So we're in pretty good shape on this side too. If I really want to go ahead and complete this, I can put the detail items in here, put the anchor bolt in there. And over these uh, precast beams, I could decide either I could model those like uh, base plates here, or I could just sort of draw them in as details. Either way, because what you're trying to do is get something that looks like this. Okay, so take your pick. Just depends on how much level you want to get to in terms of modeling every last detail. Okay. I think we have our floors in place, so the next thing we're going to decor turn our attention to is actually just creating the wall types that we need to put in there. So let me go ahead and pause for a second and we'll pick that up.